doing the interviews on the... Okay. Thank you very much, Boyd. Folks, we'll, we'll just take a moment of uh, silence uh, before we begin our meeting. Okay, thank you. All right, folks. Uh, it is, uh, what's today, the 26th of March, and um, we're here for our council meeting. And I'm going to begin by acknowledging that we are in Mi'kma'ki, which is the traditional and the unsurrendered land of the Mi'kmaq people. And uh, we are all beneficiaries of the peace and friendship treaty signed in this territory between the Crown and the Mi'kmaq back in beginning in the 1720s. Now, today, before I go to special community announcements, we have a couple of things that we're going to celebrate. And um, the first of them is an amazing event that's going to happen here uh, in uh, Halifax, well, Halifax and Dartmouth, because it's going to be in the harbor, and uh, it's going to be amazing. It's Sail GP, and this is a, an unbelievable event that um, goes to the greatest cities in the world, uh, starting on June the 1st here in Halifax and working backwards to some of the other ones. And it's really going to be very cool, and I don't know that everybody fully understands it, but we're delighted because we have the Sail GP team uh, here with us today. This event is going to be organized. The co-chairs are uh, Paul Dominican and uh, the legendary uh, John Fleming, uh, who are also with us today, Corinne McClellan, who will be helping out as well. But we actually have the uh, driver of the Canadian team, uh, Phil Robertson, who literally is here, I think, from New Zealand, right? Where you had a very successful race in New Zealand, and congratulations and, uh, on your win in New Zealand. Um, and so I thought what we would do is ask them to come to council today. This is something Councillor Cuddle is very uh, familiar with, and I know that she'll be joining me out at the Royal Nova Scotia Yacht Squadron this afternoon uh, for some further celebration of this. But I'm going to ask the driver, Phil Robertson, if you would come forward and uh, welcome us and come here while I make this hat fit my little head. <laughs> Don't laugh. Don't encourage them, as Tony Mancini would say. Uh, but no, have a seat over there, right there. We'll, put, we'll just press the button, the microphone will come on. Tell us what to expect when this hits the Halifax Harbour in uh, a couple of months. Yeah, look, it's um, definitely going to be a spectacle. Um, I'm not quite sure how to explain it properly, but these sailboats fly. They're more like aeroplanes than sailboats. They travel at 60 miles an hour or 100 kilometres an hour is the top speed. And that's quite a lot of ground you can cover on a very small harbour, which is Halifax. Uh, there's 10 international teams, and yeah, we're one of them, Canada. Our team's been running for two years now, and uh, we have four Nova Scotians on board. So, it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be very fun. Yeah, behind me I've got Jerise Finch, 
who has recently moved to Halifax. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's our grinder on board, so one of the powerhouse. Then we've got Billy Gooderham, also a recent uh, move to Halifax. He's our flight controller, which is a bit of a unique role for, for a, uh, a yacht, a flight controller. So he flies the boat. Uh, his job description is fly the boat between 1 meter and 1.2 meters above the water. If you go too high, we're going to crash. Too slow, we're too, too low, we're going to be too slow. And then we have Jen Hall, who manages our team as well, who is also a local. That's awesome. Thank you. How long have you been sailing? How long have you been doing this? Well, this series has been running since 2019. So I've, I've been in it from the start, but um, I've sailed all my life. And I'm originally from New Zealand. I was, um, I've been, what would you say, adopted by Canada? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we've, I've been leading this team from the start. So the aim, of, the aim of our squad is to develop it into a fully Canadian team, and hopefully that will happen in a couple of years' time. So I know that when I was at uh, COP in Dubai, you guys were there the week after, and I was hoping to get over, and was it, was it your team? You guys were actually in Dubai? Yeah. I would love to have been able to uh, see that, uh, but I was working, so I couldn't. <laughs> um, but we don't have like a key to the city, but we're introducing a keel to the city, uh, oh. and we're gonna find a way to give you, uh, give you that. <laughs> I wonder if Paula or John might wanna just come forward and tell us what's happening today and tomorrow, because I think the sales tickets are starting to sell, aren't they? Yep, tickets go on sale 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. John, you want to come up? Well, yeah, come on up. Second, I guess. <laughs> and just give us a report on snow clearing in uh, the city while you're uh, here. John is the president of uh, Ocean Construction. All is sunny in Dartmouth, as usual. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing that we're, we're so lucky to have uh, the team here, I mean, they, they just sailed and finished on Sunday night and basically flew up here and it, they've got a busy schedule. Uh, we're going down to the Maritime Museum to the boat school and SailGP and Team Canada is playing a big part in that and there are more details to come. But the big announcement this afternoon is ticket sales go on tomorrow at 10 o'clock online. So that's gonna be exciting. There's gonna be a couple different offerings and tickets and you're gonna be able to bring your own boat if you'd like to or there'll be premium tickets and some also general admission tickets, but there'll also be a lot of areas where you can watch the race uh, free as well around Halifax Dartmouth. So that's the big exciting announcement coming. So awesome. Awesome, and we have this potentially for three years, and I, I just don't know that people understand how, how phenomenal this is gonna be in Halifax uh, Harbor, so. Uh, Oops, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, Phil might have mentioned in an interview, and, and I haven't seen the boats live, but I've watched a lot on TV, and, and I'm heading down to a Bermuda event before this event, but really, once you see them live, it's absolutely amazing, and I think, I think the city's really in for a treat. First time I Googled, Googled sail G GP sailing, it was like, this is, this is something else, right? So people should just do that. Yeah, this is not a leisurely sail in the harbor that uh, Fleming or John Traves or <laughs> Councillor Cuddle might do. This is, uh, this is hardcore F1 on water, I've heard it called, right? That's the, what they say? Okay, so thanks to the organizers and the team. Let me come back there and get a picture with you if I could and any other councillors that want to join, we'll just take a little picture down there. Thank you.
All right, go Canada. Now, folks, we have another, uh, before we get into community announcements, we have another uh, pleasant um, uh, interlude to our council meeting, and that is that this last weekend we hosted the Juno Awards. And um, it was really an amazing thing. It was great for Halifax, it was great for Nova Scotia, it was great for our local music, musicians and industry, and it was uh, great to welcome people, not only from Canada, but industry folks from around the world. So the local committee organizers were first rate. So Allegra Swanson, I want to give a heads up, she was amazing. Uh, Suzanne Fougere and Jeff Nearing um, were great. Uh, and I want to have a chance to thank them uh, as well. But we had such an amazing team from Halifax that got involved in this. And so yesterday, Alan Reed, um, who was the CEO of uh, Keras and the Juno's uh, uh, committee, came in to see me. And one of the things he said to me was that they've never worked with a better local organizing committee. Um, it, which was really amazing. We, we had a chance, we were all over this, so I see Shannon is with us and her team. Um, you know, we, we, Shannon, we, she wouldn't let me say the greenest Junos ever, she just said we're greening the Junos, but if you went by the library at all, the public library, they were there um, demonstrating uh, solar bicycles, solar uh, uh, power that comes from batteries and uh, uh, bikes that are generating power for a soundstage. Um, it was really amazing. Um, so I want to thank her team, uh, Kim Fry. I want to thank Phil Power, who was honored here at Council a couple of weeks ago, Councillor Mancini. Phil Power was, where is he with us? San, he's, yeah, he doesn't sit, that guy. He was all over the Junos, and I want to tell you that a lot of people rec recognized uh, the great policing support that the Junos had, and Phil, so to you, I want to say thank you. Um, Maggie's team, Maggie McDonald and Brendan I see here, who has some experience, haven't been the key guy at NAIG last year. And a lot of people compared the, f the feeling to NAIG, uh, Brendan, on Sunday night um, at the actual event. Um, and I want to specifically highlight our special events team. And, you know, for me it's kind of cool because the folks who work in special events for us um, are unbelievable. So, Gillette there, when did you start with the town of Bedford, in the 91? 1991, uh, Andrew Cox started with the city of Dartmouth just after Confederation. Uh, <laughs> Andrew's not here with us. And Billy Comer, so the other thing Alan Reed said was they'd never worked with a more professional, local um, c contact in the community than Billy. And I called him yesterday, I told him that, and Billy, you're doing amazing work. You guys know, but not everybody knows what it takes to be a special events team. We've had the same team, like the core of them, Add Paul Forrest, who's now with the province, and lots of other people who've come and gone, but these guys, the whole time I've been mayor and before that, and when events happen, they just swing into action. They're not sane, uh, they're not normal, they are just a flying SWAT team of lunatics who go where they need to go uh, to get stuff done. And um, when I look at Billy and I look at Mike, to tell you how big an event the Junos was, Mike Gillette had his best hoodie on at the gala dinner. It was, uh, it was, it was, uh, I mean, we've done videos with these guys where I've been uh, mouse, not mouse trap, what was the guy? Dead mouse. Dead mouse, uh, dead mouse. I've been a mouse, I've been, I've been uh, Scrooge, I have been a ton of things that these guys make us uh, dress up as, but these guys are special. So we had to give um, our Juno that we had for the last year to Vancouver on Sunday night, uh, to Van City of Vancouver and the Slave Tooth First Nation. And uh, I was very happy to do that. But Alan Reed bought us our own special Juno yesterday. And I want to present this to staff. I don't want it in my office, I want this, to starting off, I want this in the special events office. Maybe in Cox's office, it's more organized than Gillette's, but uh, I want to present this to you guys and then I want you to take it over to Shannon, I want to take it to Maggie's and everything else, but this is the staff who've done all this great work and we've been the beneficiary of it for many years, so.
When we get to the strawberry item. Okay. Uh, colleagues, a lot of you are dressed in purple today, and there's a really important reason for that. So, um, so, so for those who are dressed in purple, or all of us, you want us to, to take a picture? How do you want to do it? Yeah, we can get purple ones and get together, and then we all gather yeah. Okay, so come on over here. We're trying to fill the meeting today. <laughs> Mancini, you're first on the list. All right, I'm going to go somewhere else. Bikes live and everything. Five minutes are being. I know there are a number of councillors that have been were at the Purple Day Gala, and uh, Councillor Cuddle was with us this morning when we raised the flag with Cass. Councillor Mancini. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to just quickly follow up. I know others will too. Uh, Cassie Megan, who started the Purple Day Gala as a very young lady uh, and you know, is now travels the world. I, I was talking to her this morning. She's off to Brazil next, I mean, to talk about the, the, the Purple Day Gala. And so just amazing. I said to somebody the other day, you know, in this job, I've met a lot of great people. We, we, we acknowledge many of them so far this morning, this afternoon. But it's the youth that I've been most impressed uh, with and people like Cassidy Beck and uh, pretty, pretty special people. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Indeed. Thank you. Councillor Hensby. Thank you much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this evening, the, trail, the Marine Riders Trail Association will be having its annual general meeting at 7.30 at Seaforth Hall. Tomorrow night, the Joint uh, Regional Transportation Authority will be having an open house discussion at uh, five, 6 o'clock at the, uh, no, 5.30 at the uh, Muscadabra Harbour Library. And coming up after that is the following week, Tuesday, April the 2nd. Uh, the Shore Active Transportation Association will be having its annual general meeting at 6.30 at the Blue Water Building in Porter's Lake. Thank, thank you. Councillor Blackburn. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. And uh, I had the, uh, the opportunity to uh, be in the, uh, the presence of greatness on Saturday. I want to thank the Easter Bunny for uh, coming out to Beaver Bank, gifted me these ears himself, so I feel very privileged. A um, couple of other things going on in the community. I want to mention that uh, coming up on Tuesday, uh, April 2nd, so that's uh, coming up quickly on us, it is uh, your opportunity to uh, attend the pop-up human library at Halifax Public Libraries. It's uh, from 2 until 6 p.m. and uh, uh, if uh, you have any uh, you know, questions, concerns, or uh, want to talk to an expert about climate change, this is your opportunity. Halifax and the uh, Halifax Public Libraries are joining forces to uh, uh, present this opportunity in the community. And again, it's at the Sackville Public Library on Tuesday from 2 until 6 p.m. 
And coming up at the end of April, April 26th, 27th, and 28th, it is uh, the Adventurous Theatre Company is back with Meet Me at the Roxy. It's at the Springfield Lake Rec Center, uh, again, the 26th, 27th, and 28th, including matinee shows, and uh, locally written by uh, producer Stacy Moore, who uh, lives in Middle Sackville, and if you're interested in attending, ticketpro.ca for tickets. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Councillor Mason. Thank you, Mayor. So colleagues, uh, I want to take this opportunity to talk about something that uh, was delightful news to get just today. Uh, as, as those of you who have been around for all paying attention know, uh, poor Ian, our clerk, uh, uh, has a, uh, become kind of a conveyor belt into working at HRM for folks. They come and work as legislative assistants, they become a clerk, and then they get poached by other people in the organization. And I want to talk about one of those in particular today. Our friend, uh, Lama Farhat, who went off to be an hazard risk vulnerability assessment specialist working with Erica at the Emergency Management Office, became a Canadian citizen today at 1136. And I could not be more pleased. I could not be more pleased. Lama came here to go to Dalhousie in 2018 and uh, loved it so much that she got a job working at the municipality and has become a full-time uh, uh, employee and uh, as of today is it a citizen, which is a citizen which I like to remind council means as of 11.38 today, she qualifies for our job, <laughs> colleagues, and, and, and arguably would do an excellent job at that or anything she put her mind to. So I want to congratulate her and thank her for choosing to stay in Halifax and coming to Canada. Thank Ooh, you, colleagues. Cool. Awesome. Ooh, cool. Thank you. Councillor Cuttle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, too, was just going to talk a little bit about Purple Day since we are all here in purple, and I just want to thank um, everyone for... Uh, getting your purple on. Um, that's great, and I know Cassidy will be really excited to see that photo. Uh, Councillor Mancini um, gave most of the information there, but I just want to note that Cassidy is uh, from Shad Bay in District 11, and um, I am just so amazed and impressed with all the work that her and her team have done, and um, just big congratulations to them. Um, and. Uh, Everybody, I know there's been some things circulating uh, on the in the in, in world of the internet, the Internet of Things, about uh, how to respond to somebody who's who might be having a, an episode or a seizure from epilepsy and what to do in that circumstance. And it's certainly something I wasn't aware of before. And so I just want to encourage everybody to you know take the time um, to to learn that and um, you know and and help, you know, people, there's, I think it's, uh, forget the stat from this morning, Mayor, you were, you were there, but it, it is um, a, you know, a debilitating disease that, that many people around the world suffer from, and so I think that, you know, learning how to respond to somebody um, who's, having a, who's having a seizure is, is a really important thing and a worthwhile um, piece of information to learn. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back, Councillor Russell. It is awesome to see you with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's amazing to be here. Um, I apologize for my voice. It, uh, there have been a number of changes over the past few months, and hopefully my voice will straighten itself out over time. Um, there are a couple of things coming up in, in Lower Sackville, in the amazing community of Lower Sackville. One of them is this Thursday night, uh, the Sackville Community Development Association is having their annual general meeting, and this is also the kickoff of Patriot Days, which is a week surrounding Canada Day. Um, so join us, if you can, at the uh, uh, Sackville Sports Stadium in the Councillor's Office at 7 p.m. for the, the SCDA AGM. The second thing that's coming up is uh, on May 4th, Saturday, it's the Sackville Rivers Association Spring Duck Run, um, and this is this is great. You get you get your chance to, to buy your duck, and you put it in the they put it in the in the river, and the ducks run down the river, and you have the opportunity to win uh, win a prize. Um, individual ducks are five dollars a piece, or you can buy a quack pack of three ducks for ten dollars. Uh, or for corporations, a single duck is $100, and a quack pack of three ducks is 250 
You can get in touch with the uh, Sapo Rivers Association at 902-865-9238. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm sure they'd let you run a bill too, uh, would they not, for, for that kind of thing? Uh, Councillor Purdy. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, so good to see Councillor Russell back. I was just telling someone today in a meeting how much I missed having you here, because there's no one like you that can like talk me. Yes, it's true. No one like it that can talk me down off the ledge in between during uh, some some of our council meetings. So really appreciate seeing you here. Missed you. So hopefully you're back for good. Uh, okay, so two things. Number one, our, our Westfall Coal Harbor Firefighters Association is having their annual uh, muscular dystrophy boot drive this year in the Sobeys parking lot where it is every year. This year, um, I, I did get it wrong in my newsletter, um, some misinformation, uh, but this year the boot drive is going to be on Saturday. Uh, from 8 until 4 p.m., so there will not be any boot drive on Thursday evening. Uh, so I hope to see you there. I'll be there in the afternoon from 12 to 4, collecting all donations. And want to thank residents, the big, big turnout we had last week for our community information meeting um, for a big uh, development planned in Coal Harbor. And we have another one coming up on Wednesday, April 3rd at Coal Harbor Place, uh, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., same room, the Westfall room. And this one is case 2023-01187, Fathom Studio on behalf of the property owner is applying to amend an existing development agreement to allow for a shared housing with special care use on Montague Road, Lake Loon. So hope to see all interested residents out for that meeting. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Kent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I wanna just take a moment to, uh, for a shout out to a resident of the Russell Lake area, Connie Dennis. Connie and her husband Don overlook uh, Russell Lake where there's a very special osprey nest. The osprey nest was impacted by the, um, some of the trail changes and restoration and a number of things. And, and those, uh, the parents of Pickles, Pickles the Osprey is now in a children's book that Connie wrote and has published. And, and Pickles is the os, uh, offspring of Oscar and Olive which are in the Dartmouth and Russell Lake area, everyone is aware of these ospreys. And she's doing a book signing next week, uh, Saturday the 6th at McMac uh, Drive, 41 McMac, and hoping that people will take the time to go out and talk to them. Tremendous advocates um, and champions for their beautiful osprey of Nova Scotia. So I think that's an exciting thing to share. Thank you. And since we're talking about the ducks in Sackville and ospreys in uh, your area, it's worth acknowledging, for those that don't know, that there's a chicken named after Tony Mancini <laughs> at uh, North Grove in, in Dartmouth. And uh, it's a fine looking animal. So I encourage people to check out, uh, check out uh, Chicken Mancini. Um, I want to just uh, mention that um, the 21st of March each year is uh, World Down Syndrome Day. And on Saturday, I had the chance to join the local Down Syndrome community and their families including our hero, uh, Will Brewer, the official town crier of uh, municipality. Um, and it was awesome. Uh, the, the theme this year is end the stereotypes uh, around Down syndrome. And it was great to be with them. All right, colleagues, um, thank you for all that. A little bit elongated, but some very important things to uh, acknowledge. Uh, we'll move to the approval of the minutes, of which there are none. The order of business and the approval of additions. Mr. Clerk. There was one addition for this meeting, information item number seven, 2024, Municipal and CSAP Election Polling Division and Tariff of Fee Expenses. Thank you. Councillor Lovelace. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I would like to bring forward information item number five on the Bay Lookout Park, please, for a future meeting. Very well, thank you. Anybody want to approve the order of business as amended? Moved by who? Uh, Councillor Mason, seconded by Councillor Kent. All in favor? That is good. That's our um, order of business. Um, consent agenda. Councillor Mancini? Mayor, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to take 15.1.4 off the consent agenda, please. 15.1.4 will come off the consent agenda. 
um, agenda. Councillor Austin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can we separate 15.2.1 just for voting purposes? Well, Councillor Austin wants to take 15.2.1 for voting purposes. If nobody wants to take it off the consent agenda, other than that, we can vote on that now, uh, Mr. Clark. Are we ready to vote on 15.2.1? I want to make sure everybody has a chance to check that out. Okay, so what we're doing is we're going to vote on that right now. Councillor Russell. Thank you. I move that Halifax Regional Council approve their transfer of 155,000 from Capital Project CI 000021 Public Wi-Fi to Capital Project CI 240006 Council Chamber Technology Refresh. Thank you. Second, Councillor Cleary. Ready for the question, colleagues? That uh, is. Not the first time you voted twice, I'm sure. That is carried, thank you. If there's nothing else, does somebody want to move that we pass 15-1-3 on consent? Councillor Cleary, seconded by Councillor Mason, ready for the question. So that is carried. 15.13 is deemed passed on consent. First reading uh, respecting charges for street improvements on a sub report. Business arising from the minutes. Calls for declaration of conflict. Motions of reconsideration, rescission, deferred business, and tabled matters. None of those. We do not have a public hearing. Correspondence, Mr. Clerk. Correspondence was received on item 1531. All correspondence has been circulated to all members of uh, Regional Council. Thank you. Petitions, Councillor Hensby. Thank you much, Mr. Mayor. I have a petition here signed by 81 uh, residents online and 16 in person, 97 names in total. And I fixed my signature to the authenticity of this petition, talking about the 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 they're opposed to having traffic tables put on their subdivision streets of Doherty Drive and Michelle Drive in Lawrencetown. Thank you, Councillor. Any other petitions? If not, we move to information items brought forward. Uh, Councillor Lovelace, use of managed retreat climate adaptation approach. Councillor Lovelace. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this, uh, this report was um, as a result of um, uh, some pretty significant activities last year with regard to uh, flooding, wildfire, and so on and so forth. And looking at ways that uh, climate change is uh, effectively altering how we as a municipality grow and how we make decisions on how we grow. Um, looking at the three strategies within this report, abandonment, relocation, and avoidance, uh, what we uh, experienced in Hammonds Plains, Upper Tan Talon was actually a forced retreat. Um, many people are still not back living in their community uh, because of the wildfire. And what this report uh, doesn't address is um, wildfire. It does not provide any uh, recommendation either for, for what our next steps are. And certainly if, if we're going to avoid some of these hazards um, and look at ways not to lose life, not to uh, lose properties in the future, uh, we certainly need to find a way to make adjustments to our decision making. Um, 
Quite frankly, the horse has left the barn. We already know that we have communities that are inside of extreme wildfire areas that are inside of flood zones. And so now it really is up to the municipality to look at ways uh, to work with senior governments to access some of these funding um, models, to, to look at new ways, um, new creative ways to assist people without, um, you know, just coming in and uh, after the fact and moving them afterwards moving buildings, moving roads, these kinds of things. So we need to take a much more proactive approach, especially in those communities that don't have fire hydrants, they don't have egress, there's efficient forestry manage inefficient forestry management policies and practices surrounding uh, the wildland urban uh, areas, these communities. And so what I'd like to do today um, is put forward a motion, and the clerk can put that up on the screen, please. Uh, and my motion is that we actually address these issues sooner than later in a proactive way. So I move that Halifax Regional Council direct the Chief Administrative Officer, um, sorry about that, to prepare a staff report that considers a decision matrix for managed retreat as a proactive response to threats against life and property from climate change. Second. Thank you, Councillor Blackburn. I think by having this decision matrix, it helps us prioritize where these communities are today, which communities need to be uh, moved, which roads need to be moved, how we actually have to address um, you know, the, the forestry practices in this area. The municipality has known since before 2013 uh, of the extreme wildfire risk in Upper Ten Talon and Hammonds Plains, and the Department of Natural Resources providing many of these uh, wildfire risk reports to the municipality as well. What we do with this information um, needs to be informed by some kind of decision matrix so we can prioritize, determine what the criteria are, and make sure that we communicate that to community, but also at the same time, we'll be adjusting uh, how we do land use planning and zoning and development in the wildland urban interface, and certainly we already have a report that's looking at that, and that will come forward to council. Um, so I'm putting this forward right now because we need a decision matrix so that staff have a better understanding of what the criteria are in order to um, conduct managed uh, retreat strategies. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Anything on that, uh, CAO? Yes, thank you for the opportunity. Um, this is a very complex topic because depending on the nature of the emergency event or the climate-driven um, uh, emergency event, the municipality may not be the leader in making the decisions. We may not be the lead response agency, as was the case with the wildfire response where DNRR was the leader. Um, certainly, um, Decision matrices are very useful documents. Um, we can go away and look at the extent to which they can be incorporated with our emergency management plan, which we're in the, in the midst of updating anyways. Um, not entirely sure whether this needs to be a separate report, but if Council wants a separate report on uh, the extent to which decision matrices can be used, then we'd be pleased to do it. Thank you. All right. Colleagues, ready for the question? Okay, that motion is carried. Thank you. We'll move to reports. The first one is 1511, the Comprehensive Neighborhood Planning Process for Strawberry Hill Future Growth Node. Um, I want to acknowledge with us today the presence of a star that's leaving us um, for no good reason, no, for great reason. Uh, Eric uh, Luchik, Luchik, I always get it wrong. I always get you confused with Milan. Luchik, Luke, how do you say it? Lusik. That's, well, I'm, you're much more lucid than I'm thinking. Uh, Eric Lusick is with us, and he's been a, a real uh, help to us in the planning department over the last number of years. And I want to thank you um, for your great service. I know you're going uh, off to do other great things, but uh, folks, let's show our appreciation for the work of Eric over the last uh, number of years. Is that somebody with him? 
Who's that beside you, Eric? Your nephew. What's your name? Matt? Matt is a planning student, so uh, Jacqueline Hamilton in front of you will sign you before you leave to a futures contract uh, at HRM. Eric is also What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing, Eric, I know from an email you sent me is that you're also a new dad uh, yourself, uh, right? Not too long, uh, a month ago? No, three months now. Yeah, that's right, you're off that, so. Uh, good luck with that and for the next five or six that you might have um, as well. Uh, Lynn, Councillor Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that Halifax Regional Council direct the Chief Administrative Officer to one, initiate a process to consider amendments to the Regional Centre Municipal Planning Strategy and the Regional Centre Land Use Bylaw to enable a comprehensive mixed use development in Strawberry Hill Future Growth Node located along Windsor Street and Strawberry Hill Street, Halifax in surrounding lands as outlined in the discussion section of staff report dated February 13, 2024 and to follow the public participation program and set out an attachment A of the staff report dated February 13, 2024. Thank you, second. Councillor Russell, Councillor Smith, anything to offer? Yes, really, really quickly, and, and we don't have a presentation on this, so I'll just speak on it uh, very, very fast, that this is similar to what we've done uh, for the area uh, close to um, Halifax Shopping Centre and, and McMack Mall, you know, planning, planning for comprehensive neighborhood in, in getting feedback from landowners, community members, and, and those abroad to, to really look at uh, planning this very, very large area. And I know there was some nervousness from the community when they saw the renders that came from the landowners. Um, just for clarity, those are um, what the landowners want. It's not what they'll get. This is a long process that uh, will, will be, as it says in the motion, comprehensive. So so, so what renders you see is not actually what we'll, we'll get at the end of the process because there's still lots of discussion that has to be had around planning and, and policy and, and land use, et cetera, et cetera. So, so that was just an ask from the landowners, but it's not actually what the city will be moving on with because we have to do a planning process and understand what um, can happen there. So I just want to alleviate that, that concern from folks, is, is that what's going to be built? Um, also, there's been some uh, landowners around the area that was not included in the current um, uh, designation in the motion lays out, or the report says that the surrounding landowners will have an opportunity to be included through the process as well. So, so you know, that, that should solve the issue with those who don't see themselves designated in the current um, growth node, but as we do the process, staff will work with other landowners who might want to be included. Um, so with that very early stage, there's still lots of work to be, to be done, and this will take some, some months to get to a point where council will see this, and I believe a new council will be the one to, to do that, but uh, just for, for folks, there's still a lot of work to be done on this, and um, uh, there'll be lots of opportunities to give their feedback. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Ready for the question? That's carried, thank you very much. Um, okay, the next item is 1512, which is on the uh, marketing levy. Do we have a presentation on the, is there a presentation on this? Uh, do we know? I believe we do have a presentation on this. Um, just waiting for the staff to come upstairs. <laughs> Yes, we have a presentation if council wants the presentation. If council doesn't want the presentation, then we're good to go. Council, what is your wish? To see it, okay. Folks, while we have a moment, I want to acknowledge in the back row Mr. Bradley Anguish, who has, I think, since the last meeting, oh no, I missed last week, but 
has the new possession. What is it, uh, Czar or Commissioner? Of Commissioner of Operations and uh, Intelligence. So good to have you. Hello there. I see that we have uh, Vicki Robertson with us. Just getting set up. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The floor is yours. Thank you. Vicki Robertson, Deputy Treasurer and Acting Director of Revenue. Uh, sorry, just waiting to see if Mr. Blackwood's going to be joining. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor to Council, just wanted to do a brief presentation on the bylaw amendments. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. Just want to do a brief presentation on the amendments to bylaw M400. So, just in the <laughs> Just in the way of a bit of background, uh, bylaw M400 was adopted in August 2023, came into effect October 1st, 2023. And what this did is it expanded the type of accommodation that is subject to the marketing levy to include short-term rentals. It also increased the maximum amount of levy, levy that can be charged from 2% to 3%. And in essence, what this did is um, required that any short-term rental operators that were registered under the Provincial Tourism Accommodations Registration Act, collect and remit a marketing levy to HRM. We actually distribute 65% of this levy to Discover Halifax, and then the remaining 35% is deposited into the Community Events Reserve. We did have some challenges. Uh, we went from collecting levy from about 50 operators to 2,000. Uh, we did not add any additional resources for that. The operators are required to submit a remittance whether or not any levy was collected during that period. And prior to this, we did have a problem with the original 50 operators not remitting on time. Uh, however, once we imposed the bylaw, that took care of that problem. Uh, however, it did create confusion for the short-term operators who were new to the process. So we actually have a two-pronged solution. The first one is actually something that the province has done for us. We did originally approach Airbnb in about 2023 requesting that they require the platforms collect and remit marketing levy on behalf of short-term rental operators. Airbnb said that they would only do this if they were working with the entire province. We then requested the mayor uh, to reach out to the province to change the legislation to require the online marketing platform operators to collect and remit the levy. Staff, along with AMANS, also urged the province to make those legislation changes. And the province gave first reading to Bill 419 on March the 5th, requiring short-term accommodation marketing platforms to collect and remit marketing levies to the municipality. And it has actually gone to second reading on March 22nd. Staff will be returning to Council in the coming months with another report on what changes are going to be required to implement this particular change in legislation with the province. And we will also address Councillor Clary's motion uh, where he's proposing an amendment to allow short-term rental operators with only one unit to remit quarterly or semi-annually. Uh, second prong of the solution, and this is really kind of dealing with what we have now, is to forgive fines and issue refunds for those who paid the fines and had zero dollars to remit, but only for the period of October 1st to March 31st, 2024. It's also to give the treasurer or designate the authority to waive, remove, or reduce these fines. This will be inclusive of all the fines, previous, present, future. Um, staff is in the process of creating a guide which will provide some parameters under which this can be done. For example, this is the first time an operator has remitted, or they may have multiple accounts and they've remitted to the wrong one, or perhaps we had some return mail from them. 
Oops. We also have um, some communications that we're going to be uh, giving out. Uh, we will be contacting any impacted operators by this change in, in the amendment or by this change in this bylaw by both mail and email within 30 days. We will issue refunds within 60 days of the bylaw amendment and we will investigate any issues with operators that are not directly impacted. So for example, operators that did not have a zero dollar levy but did have a penalty. Uh, we will deal with them on a case by case basis and we will provide a resolution within 60 days of the inquiry. We have developed a working group for this next phase. We need to go out and work with our online platform operators in order to implement the change. We are going to be working with corporate communications to develop a, a comprehensive communications plan. We know we're going to have to do some changes to the billing system. And, and it's also interesting to note that the short-term rental operators have formed their own group in just last month called Strands. Um, HRM staff and Discover Halifax will have a point of contact for the short-term rental operators, similar to what we do right now for Hotel Nova Scotia. And that's it for that. Happy to take questions. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Councillor Austin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm happy to put the motion on the floor. I move the Halifax Regional Council give first reading to bylaw M401, amending bylaw M400, the marketing levy bylaw, as set on attachment three of the staff report dated February 7th, 2024. Second. Councillor Hensby, Councillor Austin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't have a whole lot to say on this. This uh, the report that's come back is doing exactly what I wanted it to do, and you know it's interesting in the report. Like this really was an issue with the short-term operators, and the vast majority, as the stats in the report point out. Um, had zero dollars to remit and uh, you know that just didn't pass the test of fairness I think for most of us and so uh, I'm happy to see some flexibility and a good staff report and proposal here for us to fix that problem and hopefully, hopefully the province will have fixed all our problems here uh, going forward in the near future. Thank you. Thank you very much Councillor Cleary. Thank you uh, your worship. Uh, and thank you, Mr. Robertson, for the presentation and the report. Uh, I, like Councillor Austin, uh, I think this works really well, although based on a few questions, uh, I may actually recommend the alternative, and if people don't know what that is, is basically do this, but add the maximum cap of $500. So looking at attachment five, I think it is, uh, and the wording, so w when you talk about return of sales, uh, capping those to 500, is that is that just for the short-term operators? And where it says return of sales, that means they must have had something to remit. So would that apply to everyone, hotels included, for the $500 cap? Or are we just talking about a specific group? Because then um, if it's return of sales, then that doesn't sound like the people who have zero to remit. Uh, you, yeah, yes, that would be for everybody in the return of sales. Um, so it would be if they had any kind of levy to remit, we would just cap them at $500 per month or per remittance. Uh, it would be it would be across the board. Okay, so if someone was like three months delinquent, then that's $1,500 penalty because 500 per month. Um, so I think that's fair because there's still um, and I forget what the the exact numbers were. There's still a very large number of people who have not remitted anything, have not been in contact. Correct. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the Councillor, yes, that is correct. We do have a, a significant number of people who, well, actually, we have a significant number of people who have not paid it. They have actually remitted their, uh, their report, their remittance report, but they have not paid the levy. Okay. And so those are people who have remitted but haven't paid and they do owe something, so they have sales that they need to remit on. We have both. Okay. Uh, so we have a, a number of people who had zero dollars in actual levy to pay, but they have a, su a substantial penalty, and we do have others that had both levy and penalty to pay. And would those people be prioritized in contact? Because some of them may just not know what's accruing, and if you give them a grace period of a few months and they're still outstanding, then they're still racking up that $500 per month penalty. Mayor to the Councillor, as part of our communications plan when this is passed, we would be explaining what the difference would be uh, 
we've really only had about 100 people that we have not heard anything from at all, uh, that have not remitted anything. If you have, if we have not heard from you by the 15th of the month, we send out a reminder email on the 17th. So most of them by now are aware of this and the communication plan will cover the, in, the entire situation. We will be reaching out proactively to anybody who had a zero dollar remittance, but do you have penalty? We will be proactive in reaching out to them. The others, um, they can reach out to us. And all of the people on our list came from the provincial database because our rental registration is still not mandatory just yet. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the councillor, yes, we are getting it through the provincial registration. Um, and we're as assured of the quality of the data that's input there for contact information, et cetera? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the councillor, the, the quality right now is not what we would like it to be. So, for example, number of units uh, is not what we would like it to be. Contact information, we believe, is not always accurate based on Hence our Hence the recommendation not to do what I wanted because you don't know if someone has one unit or 10 units, so we can't favour the people with one because we don't know who has one. That's correct. Yeah, okay. See, this is why, anyway, uh, I won't go on the delay and why it was necessary, but clearly. Uh, so, I, I don't know how others feel, I see some more names on the board, but I would suggest based on this that, and I don't know, I'll look to the clerk and our lawyer, uh, because the way the alternative is phrased, I'm assuming we'd have to defeat what's on the floor, then put the alternative, and the only difference is the alternative is just do the, what we're doing, but then cap it at 500 a month. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mancini. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Just very quickly, I mean, uh, uh, well done, Councillor Austin, for catching this. Uh, there's an unintended consequence of this marketing levy, and so uh, uh, staff, what you're proposing is, is fantastic, or, uh, or even follow with uh, Councillor Cleary is uh, suggesting. Uh, what I wanted to bring up was that what we also didn't do a very good job of was it was explaining to short-term rental folks what the marketing levy is all about. I had numerous emails and phone calls from people in short-term rentals saying uh, cash grab and not understanding the marketing levy. And then once I explained to them the money goes to Discover Halifax, the money goes to events like the Junos that we talked about, like the Sale Grand Prix and so many others, they went, oh, didn't understand, right? So we could have done a much better job explaining the marketing levy and they were fine. To the extent now they've, the short-term rentals have a, a created an association. And that's good because they should have one voice and they've asked to be part of the Special Events Advisory Committee that uh, uh, provides the funding and uh, you know, directs the funding. So uh, I just wanted to let, you know, maybe we could do a better job of explaining the marketing levy, that'd be great. And uh, thanks, Councillor Austin, I'll support it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Was there something you wanted to say? Yeah, yeah I was gonna say through, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the Councillor, we do, as I said, have a, a large communications plan. We are planning on uh, making sure that the message is over communicated as opposed to under communicated. Uh, fantastic, and you know, maybe a little line like the Junos, which we're all very excited about. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hensby. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I'm very pleased to see these amendments coming forward. I had a lot of uh, short term rental operators in my particular district uh, actually close their business down because of this, uh, of this situation. Hopefully they may reopen again, but um, uh, Councillor Cleary asked the questions that I was going to ask about the, the accuracy of the provincial database, because I've heard there's been problems with that stuff. As you accounted for in regards to the amount of units per, per operator, that's one of the critical things I think we need to know from the province. Um, in regards to the cutoff date of March 31st, is why are we cutting it off at the end of this fiscal year and not carrying it forward? I was kind of curious, between April and May, um, if there's some operators that have not opened up for the season yet, are they, you know, they're going to still be uh, applicable to these fines or that's going to give you the discretion not to charge the fines? I just want to have a clarification on that point. Uh, for you, Mr. Mayor, to the Councillor, we did not choose March 31st necessarily because it was the end of the fiscal year as much as it, we felt that by that time, uh, once this goes through, uh, it should be loud, it should be very well communicated by then that this has to be remitted. Uh, we are seeing every month an increase in the number of regular remittances. So like I said, we're down to maybe 100 who are left. Um, they may not be open yet, but we will certainly you know, go out of our way to communicate again to everybody to make sure that they are aware of this. Um, so that would, that would, I think, answer the question about March 31st. Um, I'm sorry, I can't remember the second question. 
in regards to uh, the new operators coming on starting April and May, they have not opened their doors yet and stuff. They probably won't open until the summertime. I was kind of curious of what notification would they get or are they still be required to f file for zero, zero, zero rentals? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so we do communicate to any new registrants that come on through the provincial database when we receive their information when they register with the province. We communicate to them at that point in time and tell them what the marketing levy is and how it is remitted and you know explain to them the process. So they will be getting that when they register with the province in April, May when they reopen. And do we have any timeline about the other rural options for the short-term rentals uh, in regards to the seasonal cabins and recreational vehicles and other, there are supposed to be some more rural rules coming in, I guess you could say, for short-term rentals, and I'm still waiting to see when they'll be coming online. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the council, I don't have any further information on that at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cuttle. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. And um, yeah, I think like many, uh, I've been getting calls from constituents uh, really concerned about the fines. So I'm, I'm happy to see that this is coming forward. I have a question for you about how people might appeal their fines or appeal their situation. I mean, right now, um, I think a lot of phone calls have been coming to counselors. And um, in the future, if, if I, I see that staff have some discretion here about waiving fines, imposing fines, adjusting fines. Um, if, if somebody continues to have an issue with, with that, where do they appeal that to? Councillor, there is no direct appeal process for this. Uh, if somebody wishes to get in contact in order to take advantage of the uh, option to have the, the treasurer take a look at the, at the penalties, they can do that through our general revenue uh, email. And, and again, we will make sure that that is well communicated how that process will work. Okay, and on the communication piece, um, you know, I had one constituent, uh, English is not uh, her first language. Um, she had a very difficult time trying to communicate with, with people about the fines that she was receiving, which were quite substantial. Um, so just in regards to helping people who might have a language barrier, do we have anything in place? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the councillor, I, I guess it would depend on um, you know, the individual situation. Uh, we certainly will try in, in many different ways. We have different people within 311 and different areas, <coughs> pardon me, of HRM who can help us with that. Um, it, again, it would have to be on an individual basis, but we would certainly try our very best to make sure that that is understood, uh, whether it be through a phone call, through an email. Um, we can do you know, various ways of translation uh, through emails and so on, and sometimes that's the best way to do it. Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, in this case in particular, I think when, when a family like that who was just renting out a room in their basement and all of a sudden was, was trying to do the right thing and got such large fines, um, you know, got this massive, like basically got this massive fine and it put a real fear in them that they were somehow doing something wrong, that there'd be bigger penalties, that uh, their communication skills weren't, weren't great. Um, and so it was a real uh, scare and, and a big barrier for getting it addressed. So I just hope that as we move forward, we, you know, we, we have that in the backs of our minds about how we talk to people and how it might be more than just the fine related to the short-term rental that, that they're worried about, that it, you know, this is part of a uh, bigger newcomer cross-cultural um, issue that we need to have some sensitivity toward. Through you, Mr. Mayor of the Council, absolutely agree. And um, you know, if this is something that you would want to forward to staff uh, specifically, we could try to address it, but you know, rest assured we do make every effort to make sure that the message is understood and that there are no language uh, issues with that. Yeah, I might refer this one case uh, directly. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Smith. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you everyone for getting this report done so quickly. I know it was a scramble, and, and but it's very important and very helpful to a lot of folks. Um, communication was talked about, so I won't talk about that. I'm wondering about the March 31st date. So, you know, that's in five days, and, you know, there's going to be need time for communication and whatnot. So I'm just wondering uh, why the March 31st date was picked, and would it be beneficial to even extend it by like a week or two just to get more time for communication and understanding and you know, some of the cases that Councilor Cuddle mentioned, some folks might not, still not understand the process and I'm just worried that five days from now there might be folks who are still falling through the cracks. So I wonder if you can just speak on that March 31st date, please. As noted, we do have the option uh, for the treasurer to take a look at any situations like that. Uh, one of the situations that we envision would be any new registrants who might not be familiar with the process, uh, who, who may miss a, a remittance and therefore be penalized. Those would be the sorts of situations that the treasurer could take a look at. So the March 31st date is really to deal with the ones that we're aware of. Gotcha. Uh, and then going forward, we have another mechanism. Thank you. So the, the, the last question is just related to the, uh, I'm just trying to find it here, um, the amount collected. So we've collected, I'm just going to round to 200, 100,000, 105,000. And uh, if we approve this uh, report and the recommendations, we will then refund 56,000. Am I reading that correctly? The counselor, it's actually a little bit more than that now. Okay. Um, but yes, we would be refunding. I think it's around sixty-three thousand that okay. we're up to now. So then the the rest of the amount is is the 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 other amount would be those who were you found actually in violation and didn't didn't uh, in simple terms care um, about the bylaws. Were the folks in the sixty thousand range are the ones that me didn't understand, had zero remittance, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, the counselor, I, I think it's a, the ones that have not paid may have known that there was something coming in front of council. Um, and I, I believe the message was being given that, you know, you, you can wait okay. a little while. So I think that's probably what a lot of those are. I don't think it's necessarily that they did not care about right. the bylaw. I think a lot of them cared a lot. Uh, they just uh, were advised that perhaps they could wait for a little bit. Okay, good. So, so that number, which has now grown to 63 or so thousand, could probably change as, as you start to review cases and as this moves forward. Uh, yes. Yes, yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, I, again, I support this and I also support the potential alternative that will come forward uh, later. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Lovelace. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you for this report. Um, like my colleagues, I've received all kinds of calls about um, the fact that people didn't feel they were communicated to, they didn't realize that what, what they were supposed to submit, some of the terminology was confusing. Um, some people weren't receiving emails. Uh, you know, there, there was just a, a whole lot of issues with the way that this rolled out. So I sincerely appreciate having this uh, option in front of us. I am looking for clarification on the $386,375 that was billed to operators who had absolutely nothing to remit. They had zero dollars because they had no lodgings, no, you know, no rentals. With that $386,000, I'd like to know if, if we have those numbers, how many operators are we speaking about? And what is the average bill? Because the folks that I was speaking to, they're well over $700,000 that they were being billed because they were not aware that they had to fill out this specific piece of paper, um, even though they weren't making a penny on, on accommodations. So I'm wondering if you could just t tell me how many operators are, are we speaking about who are being billed without actually having any money to remit and no accommodations were being rented? Uh, th uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the Councillor, we have, um, I'm just looking at a few notes here, looks like about 450, roughly, uh, that had a zero remittance, but were penalized. Uh, yeah, that's really heavy-handed. Um, that's, that's a lot of families 
that are paying a penalty um, for not filling out a piece of paper. I, w I do agree um, that I think we need to take a different approach and actually look at the alternative. Um, I, and I know I've said this with, with staff in the past, like I don't, we, the fact that we don't even have an appeal process, um, that the, you know, they, they don't even know who they can talk to, which is why we're getting the calls um, as counselors. And so, you know, being a new program, I think moving forward, um, council needs to be aware that there really should be an appeal opportunity. There should be in every kind of new program an opportunity to understand quickly how we can iron out um, uh, the problematic issues, the, the, the inconsistencies and the problems and so on. But for the $386,000, that's a lot of money um, to, to penalize uh, folks for not even for not for not renting anything, so I think that um, I do agree with uh, the alternative. Um, I think, uh, Councillor Austin, were you putting the alternative on? Okay, so uh, I'll just I'll just wait to hear from you. But I do think that um, you know we we need we need to we, we didn't expect to have the revenue. It was not budgeted as revenue. We didn't know that we would be receiving um, penalty cash, right? Those fines. So I, uh, I am in favor of um, of removing that, of wiping that out. Thank you, Councillor Austin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And you know, uh, I've, I've got a, a probably a few questions on just the alternative because the way I understand it, colleagues, is this. Uh, whether we're doing the alternative or whether we're doing the recommendation, either one is solving the issue in terms of all these short-term operators who got fined for zero dollars. We're also building flexibility into the bylaw to allow our smart staff folks to be able to apply flexibility going forward um, for unexpected situations, you know, unique circumstances, whatever uh, the, ca the case might be. Um, and the province is taking this problem from what the legislation says, we haven't seen it implemented yet, um, off our plates because every short-term operator's no longer gonna need to send this to us because Airbnb and you know whatever the uh, provider will be deducting at the point of uh, the transaction, it'll be collected there. So I don't know that we need to cap a fine when we are already building flexibility into the bylaw and the people left that will still have to report directly to our people who would potentially be fined by us is the Weston, the Lord Nelson, all the big operators who should know better and have professional staff to run them. So I kind of, I don't see why we need to cap things when at the end of the day, we have the flexibility, uh, the short-term operators are gonna be exiting this process anyway, and what we're gonna be left with are the people who you actually wanna find with some teeth to, teeth to make sure that they comply, because this is a one size fits all. We can't, if I understand it, the way the bylaw is set up, there's no definition of, well, this is a short term operator, small operator, this is a large operator, we have a one size fits all fine. So I think we should leave the staff recommendation as it is, because I think what they've done is gonna make the most sense for actually where we're gonna go, as well as for right now. A am I missing anything in my interpretation? there? Uh, can you just share the Not really. We believe that the legislation will probably take care of 90, 95% of the short-term rental operators. There will be some who are not renting through one of these platform operators, through Airbnb, VRBO, whatever. Um, those ones would still be obliged to remit directly to us. And so that is why that, that $500 cap is still there. It's just to avoid having them you know, it's sort of duplicate the way up because the first month is $25 a day, then it becomes $50 a day if they don't remit for the second month and then so on and so forth. So it's really just a way to say each month we're going to stop it at 500 and then the, the clock starts ticking again the next time that you don't remit. It, it's not going to apply to everyone the way it was when we first uh, envisioned this $500 cap uh, working, but it still would catch the ones that are still going to be remitting by themselves without the help of VRBO or Airbnb. Mm -hmm. So the flex, uh, if for those... Very quickly. Very quickly. 
Oh, sorry, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so the, for, the, for those that would remain, the small number who'd be doing short term outside of a big platform, um, would our flexibility that's built into the bylaw still apply in those situations that we could exercise? Uh, through you, Mr. Councilor, yes. It, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the Councilor, <laughs> yes, it would. Uh, absolutely, uh, we would still have that flexibility. Um, I think the what's on the floor, the staff piece is fine. Thank you, Councillor Clary. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, quick question. So uh, to Councillor Austin's point, do the hotels, are they typically behind in their remittances? Because they have bookkeepers and accountants, and I would imagine we owned only 50 of them before and they were regularly going. They're actually the ones who are probably most on time. Are you to the Councillor, they are now. Okay. They are now, I like that. Uh, and so of those ones that are behind, we're talking short-term rentals. And to Councillor Austin's point as well, I see short-term rentals on Facebook, on Kijiji. I don't, they're not just on Verbo and, and Airbnb. There's lots of ways people do short-term rentals, especially around here for um, seasonal properties, uh, around the lake and that kind of stuff. And I think it, when you look at attachment five, uh, which is the alternative, it's not just about the capping, and I think capping is appropriate $500, because some of these could be thousands of dollars for once we find out, because don't forget, they've only got a few more days, and they may find out, oh, I was traveling, I wasn't renting it out, I just came back, I got your email, and then it's still thousands of dollars. Uh, and so not only is it capping of five, Attachment five is giving, we're delegating to staff the ability to waive, reduce, or cancel those fines. And unless you want more of those calls to your office and then have to come back to council for another amendment, oh, we forgot this or we did this, I think empowering our staff, our treasurer, to use that judgment and say, look, given your circumstance, yes, we'll waive that for you. You know, we had, we're sending it to the wrong email address for three months. You know, gosh, we're sorry about that. I don't want that to come back to us and then have to do another thing here at council. Um, the, the, the treasurer should have the ability to do that. So everything that we've talked about here, everyone agrees with, from what I can tell. Uh, the, the biggest thing for me in the alternative is giving staff that delegation to waive, cancel, or reduce those fines if appropriate. And the capping at 500, I'm fine with that too because I don't think we're not punishing them. Listen, if you haven't done this for three months, that's still 1500 bucks. That's still a huge chunk of change especially if you haven't rented out your apartment uh, or, or unit or whatever it happens to be. So anyway, my advice, vote down this one, bring the alternative, which is the exact same except for those two additions, and that's probably a better place, and then we don't have to worry about it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Vicki, anything else? Uh, no, that's... Okay. You ready for the question on the motion as presented? Yes. Councillor Mancini? Just a question uh, based on what Councillor Cleary is saying, but isn't the main motion as it stated giving staff the ability to be flexible? So that's not an addition to the alternative where we're looking at capping. Can we have clarification on that? Vicky? You, Mr. Mayor, to the Council, I believe the main motion does include the flexibility for the Treasurer. Hmm. The amendment is to allow the $500 cap in. Yeah, okay. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Colleagues, ready for the question on the motion as presented? Okay, so the motion as is carries. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Austin, bringing that forward. 15.1.3. Um, um, has passed charges for street improvements. 15.1.4 was taken off consent. This is protecting the Eastern Hemlock. Councillor Mancini, I think. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The, uh, I put the following motion on the floor that Halifax Regional Council direct the Chief Administrative Officer to develop a plan for management of the Hemlock Willie uh, Adelgid uh, with the Halifax Regional Municipality. So moved. Second by Councillor Stoddard. 
Yeah, thank you. Very, uh, very quickly on this, Mr. Mayor, we had a very good presentation at the Environment and St uh, Sustainability C Committee, and uh, it's quite concerning uh, where we are with our hemlock forest in the province. Uh, we had someone j just talk about the, the province in general, but also here in HRM. So the only reason I took it off the consent agenda, I fully support this, is a question for the CAO. This is a, uh, you know, we're almost at a crisis level when it comes to protecting our hemlock forest. The question is, uh, how quickly can we get this back? I'm worried that this will get lost in the shuffle of the, of the numerous uh, uh, reports that we do ask staff of, but uh, this really should be prioritized because if we don't deal with this now, uh, we could be in a situation that's quite concerning uh, even a year from now. So I, I, I know how quickly will this, will this come back is the question. I see Crispin Wood is here. I will ask him to speak to that. And I know Crispin knows how Good afternoon, important this is. Sir, welcome. Good afternoon, uh, Mayor, through you to the Councillor. Oh, absolutely, this is serious. Um, however, I still feel we've got a little bit of time. Okay. Um, it was identified in HRM last year, uh, although that's uh, a fairly, it's actually quite far from the sort of front lines of where the pest is currently in the province, and that pest, that incidence has been uh, eradicated. Uh, we will be working with the Canadian Forest Service to do monitoring at uh, various locations around HRM over this summer. Uh, but I, I think we've actually got a fairly uh, aggressive plan for the planning process to be ready for uh, budget planning season for next year okay. so that we can be set up to be doing whatever we need to be doing, what we decide that we are going to do to fight this pest uh, in sort of the 24, sorry, 25, 26 fiscal year. So I do think we've got a little bit of time. Okay. We've got some breathing room. Yes, it's, you know, it's certainly critical. We need to get ahead of this, um, but I, I think we have time. If I may, so Crispin, if if things change, the timeline change, the, the, uh, it gets, uh, do we have the ability to ratchet that up and say, oh, wait a minute, we better react quicker than, than we are. Is that still possible? Um, so maybe uh, uh, Parks might actually be able to respond to this one better, but I do know Parks did put some money into their uh, um, operating budget for this upcoming fiscal uh, to be able to be a little more nimble in case this pest does arrive in a local park, but uh, maybe Ray might be better to speak to that. Ray, good afternoon, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Ray Walsh, Director of Parks. Um, yes, we did uh, earmark, if you will, some funds in the 2024-25 operating budget to be able to react um, to this past if need be. And, that, and thank you, that, Mr. Mayor, that's good for me, colleagues. Uh, I, I follow the leadership of these two guys, and I trust them uh, wholeheartedly. It was very concerning, and maybe we, at some point in time, should have a pres that same presentation, everybody could see it. It was rather concerning for those who were there. So thank you for that work, and uh, uh, I'm glad to hear we have a little bit of time, but we don't have a lot of time, so that's great. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, ready for the question, colleagues? That's carried, thank you, and thank you, uh, Mr. Wood and Mr. Walsh. Um, 15 to 1 out of Audit and Finance, uh, we have passed. That's the uh, Chamber Hybrid uh, Meeting Technology request. We'll go to 15.3.1 from members of Council. Councillor Hensby uh, on uh, the use of RVs for residential use. Councillor Hensby. Thank you much, Mr. Mayor. I'll put the motion on the floor that Halifax Regional Council direct the Chief Administrative Officer to provide a staff report considering land use zoning changes to allow for the use of recreational vehicles, RVs, for residential use. This report should include and consider, one, the temporary accommodations for construction, seasonal rentals, backyard suites, and emergency sheltering, two, compatibility within urban, suburban, and rural areas, and three, uh, best practices from other jurisdictions where RVs are utilized for residential uses. Second. Second, Councillor Mancini. Councillor Hensby. Thank you much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we have seen over the last little while these, the use of RVs becoming more and more popular uh, in many places, but also more critically during the recent uh, homeless situation. I've had some constituents uh, have um, there's some of their children trying to find a, a place to live or rent or whatever, and in the meantime, they want to plug in their RV in, in, in the side yard, allow them to live at home in the RV, but uh, according to the zoning, that's not permittable. 
So, so the question I want to bring this forward to that. Also, I've been asking about the use of RVs as seasonal rental facilities. I have a number of these now being situated along coastal lots along the eastern shore, very beautiful settings and stuff, but they're being used as a camping site or a rental site, whatever the case may be. There's still no rules and regulations on that. And also, of course, uh, recently with the sh emergency sheltering, we had the opportunity, uh, the 20 minutes meeting to talk about in regards to Shuby Park being utilized as a, as a place. I really think that we need to look at the more openness to the use of these RVs. And on my particular street, uh, there's two of them. One of them is being used for a combination to repair a burnt house. Uh, so waiting for, he's still waiting for the trusses to arrive. And the other one is this has in their side yard is a, uh, overflow for when visitors come visiting. But uh, I think that it's necessary we should look at this, but I'm also curious in the other jurisdictions where we scan, where we see in Vancouver they're using driveway housing. So they're using these little tiny homes as, as a different different use. So I don't know if the RV needs to be jacked up and put on, on blocks, where the case may be, just to, to warrant it as maybe as a mobile home unit. Uh, those things we need to discuss, but uh, hope, hope the report will bring those points forward. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mancini. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Hensby, for bringing this forward. I support the staff report. He alluded to Shuby Park. Uh, you know, in October, we stood up Shuby Park. It's usually closed. Uh, we have 12 people living there now. Uh, and, you know, I, I see a lot of these people on a daily basis are in there. And there, some of these folks, or many of them are working. Uh, some of them were rent evicted and uh, tenting or trailering is a new new thing for them. They were able to acquire the funds to get a, a trailer. And so it's worked very well. Uh, these folks, the agreement is they have to leave by the end of April. And they knew that coming into it. Uh, so, you know, the motion that the, the, the Councillor Hensley is bringing forward is, I think, very timely. Uh, it's a timing issue also. How quickly can we have this come back? We are very flexible on our approach to backyard suites. Uh, we are now realize we should be more flexible. Uh, rooming houses and so on. We understand the, uh, where we live now, what's going on in our country and our municipality. We need to be more flexible. So I, I do uh, support this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Russell. Thank you very much. Uh, generally speaking, I support the motion as well. I want to make sure that uh, one of the things that is considered is the number of RVs on any particular property uh, is in line with what we currently have as far as uh, the number of dwelling units on that property so that someone doesn't have a principal dwelling unit um, and then half a dozen RVs on their property. So hopefully that will be included in the, uh, in the contents of the report. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Cuttle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, um, I'm, I'm happy to see this motion come forward as well. I mean, there are a lot of questions about where RVs are appropriate or not. Um, you know, I've seen in my district where people have infilled along the coast and then put down an RV. I wonder about things like septic and, and sewage and how that's being handled, um, whether these um, are, you know, where you might not be able to build a building, but you put an RV, uh, are there safety concerns uh, with those lots? So it does feel a little bit like the Wild West out there and that we don't have clear rules around the use of RVs. And so I think this is a, a timely motion because there's clearly some benefits to them, but, um, but there's also some concerns. And I think we just need to take a look at this and make sure that they're being used appropriately. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, colleagues, ready for the question. That motion carries. Thank you, Councillor Hensby. Um, <clears throat> colleagues, we will, um, we have no motions. We have one in camera item. Does somebody want to take a shot at that? Councillor Mason? Thank you, Mayor. I move that Halifax Regional Council 1 adopt the recommendations as outlined in the Private and Confidential Staff Report dated February 20th, 2024, and to direct the Private and Confidential Report dated February 20th, 2024, be maintained private and confidential. Second uh, by Councillor Cleary. Ready for the question, colleagues? Question.
Carried, thank you very much. Um, we have no added items other than an uh, information uh, item. I'll move to notices of motion. Councillor Blackburn. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, take notice that at a future meeting of Halifax Regional Council, I propose to introduce Administrative Order 2024-001-ADM, respecting tax relief for nonprofit and registered Canadian charitable organizations, the purpose of which is to establish a new tax relief policy for the municipality. Thank you, Councillor Cuttle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Take notice that at a future meeting of Halifax Regional Council, I intend to move that Council consider adopting by policy a public participation program, the purpose of which is to consider amendments to the Regional Municipal Planning Strategy, Regional Subdivision Bylaw, the Planning District 4 Prospect, Secondary Municipal Planning Strategy, and Land Use Bylaw, and any other municipal planning documents that are deemed necessary to enable a mixed-use neighborhood development at the Halifax Exhibition Center lands located along Prospect Road, Highway 333, Beachville. Thank you. Is there anybody else? All right, I'm gonna move for a staff report to see if we could get the clock adjusted to uh, the current time as opposed to uh, the time from a couple of weeks ago. If there's nothing else, uh, folks, then I would be prepared to consider. I wanna wish everybody a, a happy uh, Easter uh, weekend uh, upcoming um, and other religious holidays underway as well. Motion to adjourn? Moved. Moved, accepted. We are adjourned.